right on the money just like waiting like let's we're, we're still a couple of minutes early so let's see like people joining us uh <laughs> we have we have you and me and my boyfriend oh <laughs> hello <laughs> hello harriet hello hello we're just waiting for more people to uh come on in how are you today aga i'm good i'm good it's so nice outside it is very nice like you can see like i had to like uh, block, block some light um, from. Well, um, let's just get it get it rolling. We're a bit early. Um, welcome everybody and everybody who is there, here, and coming to the episode eighteen of Morse Ghost by Vesa. Obviously, I'm Vesa. If you don't know who I am, I'm fashion stylist and uh, art director at large, doing crazy things, and uh, I am. Uh, welcoming a very special guest, Aga Segurana, the founder of uh, ASV <laughs> Communications. Um, uh, guys, now with that, uh, before we get it going, uh, please, 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 if you have any questions for me or Aga, please use the uh, question box down below. Send your questions and I will check them uh, towards the uh, end of this live so we can uh, make sure that we answer those because we won't be having so much like time to focus on all of the comments going <laughs> up and down, up and down. So, further ado, could we start, um, Aga, about of you telling everybody who you are, what you do, and where are you Morse coding to us today? Oh, I hope my family is also watching because they still don't know what I'm doing. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so my name is Aga. I'm Spanish. I've been in London for six years and a half doing fashion PR. And I took the risk of launching my own agency at the end of 2018, which was super exciting. It all happened very like organically. And yeah, I've been doing like I've been representing some amazing up and coming designers um, ever since. So, and that's how you and I met. <laughs> yes, that that is true. It's it's quite funny actually because, uh, like many of you know, I I did a little escapade to uh, Spain in 2018 actually for a year. So I was in I was based in Madrid, and then when I got back to London, there was there was a couple of like you and another PR agency that had surfaced while I was away and uh, it was quite funny because I remember receiving emails for you for like good two seasons before I even paid <laughs> any attention and I do apologize for that. Stop! <laughs> but uh, like patience is always the key and then definitely uh, and then one day I went uh, went to come uh, I came to visit you and it was love at first sight we became friends <laughs> uh, and it was amazing. Um, how has how has it been for you this all of this like what good two and a half three months now we we we're here in the UK where obviously we're fast forward uh, opening up the the country on Monday uh, the first uh, first day of se uh, second phase and then already on the fifteenth of June uh, all of the retail stores are going to be opening so how has it been for you all of this time business wise and personal business wise. It has been very challenging. I don't think there has been any businesses that has not been affected. It's really affected every single one of my clients. And obviously for me, it's just very sad because I develop really personal relationships with them. And it just kind of, like, I always joke saying how it becomes like me having babies. Yeah. <laughs> and just for me seeing and like hearing how much they were struggling and like as any other PR, brands coming and saying hey Aga sorry we got a we get a pause I can't carry on I had one client that was very sad they had to shut down this store make everyone redundant it was really it was really devastating and so for me I had to scale back as any other business cut down as much cost as you could and 
But then, in a way, I think it's also being quite interesting and positive because it has made me think. Okay, we gotta do things differently. We don't have a physical showroom anymore. What can we do? What can we offer stylists, journalists? How we? How can I still do my job, pitch my clients, and obviously stay relevant and advise them as well as to how they have to keep moving forward? And for me personally, it's been it's been rewarding because I've been like studying, I've been learning a lot, reading, and I think it's been a time to pause, slow down. And reflect. What have you been doing? Has it been really working? Why not? What can we do different now? And the same thing, the same process. I've been asking my clients to do the same. Is it so important to be like? It is the way all this has gone, and has affected. You've seen that it has affected the fashion industry massively, and it will change. It will not be like it was before. And so for me, it's been like, okay, let's focus. What can we do different now? How can we be more sustainable? Not just for the environment, but for the business as well. So in a way, it's been it's been interesting in that sense, and not that negative. Because I always try to kind of like hold on to that positive、um, thing that happens in every situation. Because yeah, otherwise I would have probably jumped out the window by now. <laughs> yeah. But but I'm I'm so happy happy to hear that you've taken the, the exact same approach than what I have done. It's almost the sort of thing is like wait a minute, okay, things are shifting. But for me, from the beginning, I saw this as a great opportunity in so many levels. It, it was almost、yeah. like I was like I, I was waiting for this something like this in in that sort of sense to. Kind of stop, and I'm gonna be like, okay, now, now the turtle is gonna start running. Yes. Because, because I've, I've I've never been the type of、uh, person to boast of things. What I do, I always let the work speak for itself, and I always believe in everything. Is like when you do the groundwork, you will you're gonna be fine regardless. And this is going to be the sort of time that some brands, some、uh, creative、Definitely. individuals in, in the industry, some will really, you know, bloom, and some will. Unfortunately, will wither away, and、uh, I think I think it's the key thing is now three months is a long time. So imagine in, in any normal normal scenario, if you sit down for three months and do nothing, what do you expect is going to happen afterwards? Nothing. It's it's pretty it's, it's pretty simple as that. <laughs> so yeah. So what was so what was、uh, your advice to the brands that you found? Struggle the most with the change.、Um, so the first thing I said to them was,、um, I kind of told them, "Listen, your consumer has like their behavior has changed. They still need you, so you still need to keep communicating through your social media channels, through your website, through what you do, and because they they want to hear from you. Obviously, you've got to be very like." <laughs> Careful with what you say. You don't want to come across as like insensitive, but、yeah. you have to be there. You have to listen. You have to kind of like learn their new needs because it has changed. And obviously, as I said, nothing is going to go back to the way it was before. So if you don't start talking to your audience, learn what they need, you're going to actually miss the boat. And you're gonna find it really hard to just go back on track. And so, some of like my clients, they they've done amazing, amazing things, and I'm super proud of them. Like collaborations with charities, because I think it's so important that even if you're small, to do something, to not just to show your audience that you're doing something about it, but it's more about like you as a business owner, you're trying to do something good, and it's not only for the big brands. It's also, for, I think, for everyone. I think if everybody just helped each other out, this could just be so much easier for everyone. So, like, yeah, my clients—they've been doing lots of little, th- like, different things, just、um, masks and everything. And I'm really happy to see when they come up with those ideas. And I'm like, well done, you! I'm going to pitch everyone. I'm going to sell. I'm going to tell everyone that you're doing this because it's so interesting. It's so good to see like the small designers really trying to help the people. So yeah, for me, it's just like like a prop moment. Like, oh yes, you're doing so well. But but that's that's the sort of sort of sort of thing that 
people should realize that, for example, even in uh, during the war times of World War Two, a lot of the people who would be, you know, Coco Chanel for one of them, you know, it's not at, at first that, ah, okay, now is the war, we have this jersey fabric. No, yeah. first you cater, you know, for, for the people who need it, like whatever it's supplies. <laughs> Yes. And all of this sort of stuff. And then through that, you kind of come as a winner because you contributed to the society. Because exactly. Because without society, you have no business, you have no customer. What do you have? It's, this is not about, about just the individual, which I'm super happy about, that this is shifting away from this type of a you know, crazy celebrity way of thinking or individual that everybody is kind of looking at the holy cow and it's like, oh, whatever she or he says we have to do because it's completely unsustainable and- 100%. And it's fake. It's, uh, why would you, why would anybody want to base their buying or consuming habits based on somebody saying that I think pink is going to be the trend. I want to buy the pink because it stands for something. Yeah. Ra rather than just because it's vain or sort of whatever um, <laughs> you know you know how it is I, I, I keep it yeah. I keep it real because it's quite interesting now to see that even the bigger um, bigger powerhouses and high street brands even okay. even Zara you know it's a massive Spanish um, uh, company that has been very controversial in many ways in positive mm -hmm. in negative but now I've noticed that they've started to uh, focus a lot more on uh, recyc recycled materials. Um, it was about time, let me tell you that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it yeah, took them a long that, time to get that. That's what, that's what I mean is that even they have to adapt because even with that money behind them, they would not be able to uh, sustain in their marketplace if they do not change with the times, which exactly. is amazing. So. I think it goes from, from all of the levels. Um, could you tell, since that uh, <laughs> it comes across that you're, you are, are a family, family uh, person, even in your business, what are the, the core values of uh, ASV Communications? We're very transparent. And, but then at the same time, I always ask the same for my clients. And in fact, every journalist, stylist, like I always say, be honest with us. Cause for me, it's just not like it's just not business. It's just more than that. So we're very transparent, and so the way we work, we always tell the truth as it is. Okay, listen, this isn't working, but we've got other ideas. We think like we can find a solution to this problem. So we always say the same. Like we're always going to just tell you as it is. Obviously, as nice as we can, we're going to say it. But we expect the same. So if a client is unhappy, we all, I also want to hear that because obviously that means I'm not doing something right. But it's also a good way for us to learn. And for, that, for, like for me, that's, that's the key thing. Honesty is the best policy. I told you that earlier today. And I stand yeah, by yeah. it. Um, and then that, and that's the reason why I fell in love with you in the first place because I remember I just walked in and I said, <laughs> to say it how it was, I had like no fear of God and I was like, this woman either likes me or thinks I'm completely crazy. <laughs> oh my God, no, I loved it because you were so like, this is, this is me, either you like it or you don't like it and I was like, yeah. I like it, come here <laughs> anytime. Borrow as many samples as you need. Um, but yeah, like for us, like honesty, transparency, and also um, really good like work ethic. We work really, really hard. And obviously, yes. And like that's, that's like, I guess, the way I was brought up. Like always work yeah. hard. Nothing is given for free or just because you look great today. You have to work hard if you want to achieve something in life. And... Yeah. And I think at the end of the day, that's more rewarding. And that's why I still get super excited every time I see a client in a magazine. I'm like, yes, she's there. It's like, finally. And it's just like, most of my friends, they say, how can you still get excited? And I was like, how can you not? That is my question well, for if, you. If, if you. If you don't get excited, what's the point of doing that? Do you, do you know what I mean? It's like, because I, I can have... Well, like personal experience to share with everybody like through your clients that you represent that I've even formed through Instagram like a uh, relationships with them for example like um, Albert Gold Jewelry yes! like 
uh, I've heard the backstory of how the jewelry pieces that I've, I've pulled were already designed years ago and nobody got it and I said that they are so modern and there's like there's so so much um, passion and um, stories behind all of that sort of stuff so if you can't get excited about that then do something else you exactly <laughs> exactly because that's the, like that's the point is like for me like what you do should be like a hobby you should enjoy it every yeah. day obviously obviously don't get me wrong i'm not happy all the time <laughs> there are days like that i'm like oh god i hate my life but i do enjoy what i do and i think it should be the same for everyone you should wake up in the morning and say like yes let's crack on today let's send loads of emails <laughs> Exactly, because what's the, what's the point? Otherwise, I I always say that then just you can go and work in a supermarket if you just want money. There you go. You know, exactly. Because, because in our industry is the the biggest. You know, you can get to a point that you can make a lot of money and you can make a great living, but it doesn't come easy. Exactly. You need you, you need a lot of like persistence to get get to that level in in this industry just if somebody is thinking that we got like some sort of golden speed <laughs> ticket like, with the chocolate factory i wish i wish <laughs> <laughs> no um have you found any new innovative uh ways of working with with pr uh that you're going to apply now the future times ahead have you been reading my mind i don't like this <laughs> yes actually yes um since the lockdown situation happened um i started thinking what can we do and so we are i don't know if i should say this yet but we kind of like investing in doing something um you're going to know in a couple of months yeah you don't have to tell, but, like... but we definitely we are definitely adapting to this situation um even though we now coming out and um in a couple of weeks like most stores will be open i think still relevant to do what we're going to do because it's going to also show that we really don't like we really need to focus more digital than we have been doing before so it, i think it really what we're going to do is really going to change the way pr has been done until now so yeah but i can't say oh so tempted though only my clients now <laughs> i think so yeah yeah and it's and, and it's a, it, i think it's a great way even though that obviously i i it's certain things are going to be impossible without the human interaction and i do love Definitely. the human interaction but i uh i'm all for that if we can minimize all of the unnecessarily faffing around you know just to kind of support the situation before it calms down you know because i i don't i don't understand i um i don't think it's beneficial for anybody that if we're going to run into that lockdown getting eased up and getting back into our old ways because the old ways got ourselves to this uh, situation. situation where we are right now and i and i don't mean it like a you know spreading the thing but our habits as humanity has got us into this way and if we don't change there might be something way worse coming down our way in, in the near future. And this is what people have to start realizing, you know, it's not just about your need or like because I can't take it. I was like if you can't take it, get an online therapist or something like this because you know, patience is a virtue. 100% who, who who can have discipline, you know. Mas you know, that's how it is. I want to believe though that people have learned from this. and that things will be different in a positive way at least i want to hold on to that <laughs> we shall see but i really think it'll be different in a good way yeah but i mean it's like i i would say it's it's going to be like 46 day i've i've already seen yeah. some people change a lot and then some people that i thought thought that are going to be great are doing quite the really opposite. oh yeah. that's disappointing oh. yeah because I, i i think it's like there's a lot of this sort of like in general like i think it's it's more about then it's not even about your profession it's about just like the type of human you are or a type of person you of course. are because because i've seen people who have like really stood stood up and you know starting to shine and i can i've no, noticed that some people really are very amp like empathetic and 
really beautiful in that sense. And then some people are just like complain and then they just uh, oh. feed, feed more fuel to the fire and do exactly yeah. the same thing about what they are complaining. Just like the lady in the news who's, who drove 90 <laughs> miles to a beach to complain on national TV and say like, why the fuck are that. all of these people here? Question is, why are you there? So maybe that sums up like what I was trying to um, express yeah. here. So <laughs> I'm just saying like, proceed with caution, please. Yes. Um, uh, it was so funny because like you, you said to me that, <laughs> that I'm reading your mind and you actually just read my, my oh, mind no. with like three questions when I was like, Oh, okay, so... Oh, shit. <laughs> Sorry. <don't worry. laughs> I gotta control this power I've got. <laughs> don't worry, I'm resourceful, you know. I, I always have a backup plan or backup plan. Um, what, if, even though that there's been so much negativity in in our society and, and humanity in general, it's like a lot of lives have been lost and uh, we've had to adapt in many ways. What do you see as positives? Not necessarily as a professional wise, but just as uh, for us as humans. Can you, you say that again? Sorry, it's freezing. I don't know if it's my, I don't know if I'm freezing, but you were freezing for me. Sorry. It's, my... okay. it's okay. It's, this, is, this is the reality. We <laughs> exactly. Know. Keeping it real here. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, but what I, what I was asking is like, um, as much as there's been horrible uh, negativity and lives lost, um, mm -hmm. do you see any positives coming out of this? I think so. I see. Well, I think there are loads of like positive things coming from this. Like in the fashion industry alone, um, obviously, you can see all these big designers changing their way with like Gucci, Saint Laurent, and those ones. And I think that it is good that those big labels are doing something to kind of like pause and slow down and do things more sustainable which I think it's the way forward because the fashion industry, I mean, <laughs> it's not the best when it comes to like all the waste that it produces. Um, so for me, it is really positive that those big designers have realized they are changing that because I think they are going to set an, like an example, even though a lot of like smaller brands are doing that, people always look up at the big ones and it's like, oh, if they are doing that, I may as well. So they will follow suit. So I'm yeah. actually excited because hopefully that's going to bring on this new wave of more brands just get on, getting on board and then slowing down and instead of having to produce like a thousand collections every season, which I think sometimes it's just not unnecessary. Yeah, because nobody don't even have the time to wear them. It's like, I'm, I'm sorry, like, who is, yeah. that, who is that person who can buy spring, spring, summer collections, fall, winter collections, Ski, uh, ski, after ski, resorts. Pray so. Like, like, who is this person? Like, yeah. I'm sure that there are those, but there's a very, very, very minuscule uh, group of people who can actually do that, you know, or who have the life of luxury of just like leisure around. They have a house full of clothing. That's all I can think of because yeah. there's no way I could actually keep all that in my house. Yeah, because because I think it's it's amazing from also from the creative uh, aspect for yes. for the people creating because they will have the time to create things let things grow research come, everything yeah, come, come up with like um clever solutions for the the modern modern day people rather than just Definitely. like forcefully listen to a uh trend forecasting agency and say produce green now yes. it's all about plastic now it's about this you have to in three years times you need to think about corals well i'm like really because yeah. I, I never i i have never um worked based on uh trends or what somebody's saying that oh this you have but to that's do. so good that's honestly so good because not I, many not many stylists yeah not many stylists do that and so like for for me most of my clients what i love about them is like how unique they are and that they really don't follow trends. They do what they feel passionate about. And that's what I also love about you. You do your own thing, your own vision, what you think it's best for that shoot. And that's something I really, really like value about you because well done, you go for it. Because I think more people should be doing the same. Because like, obviously I hate when people say like, oh, 
no, she has to wear this and this because it's like the trend. And it's like, oh, but she's wearing the same thing she was wearing in, on the catwalk show. It's like, what no. is that about? That's but, not but, styling, but, but, that's just dressing. Yeah, that's dressing. That has nothing to do with styling because somebody else styled that already. You're just copying. And that's not exactly. That's not creative. That person no. didn't really think of an outfit that could. I don't know. All the things that go into like styling. Yeah, and to be honest, like for me, being a being a stylist, like I'm, I I consider myself so much more than a stylist. I do, I do nowadays. I do music. I do creative concepts and all of that. I'm just like all around. <laughs> creative nerd who likes to do stuff but I always approach everything um, the sort of aspect of like who is this for would this type of character or this type of woman or a man actually exist in our in our society when I do yes, I yes. think about like oh this is like the bag lady who keeps on always dragging <laughs> this shit up and down the high street that I keep on seeing or oh this is that lady who is a, who always smells like patchouli and always go to the <laughs> toy cafe in the corner shop. This is what I'm thinking about. Like, I'm thinking about, like, real life. I'm not interested about somebody's point of view, why why uh, a 90s revival is great when you were born in 98. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry, but it doesn't work that way. And if you think that you invented the whale thing again, because it's been done way too many times. Yeah. That's why I'm actually looking forward to like coming seasons. What brands are going to be doing? Because it's like for me, obviously, from a PR point of view, we have to know the trends because most magazines are very much trend led. Yeah. So we are like, oh God, again, the same stripes for summer, <laughs> dots for summer. Woohoo! Every single year, it's the bloody same trends. And it's just like really like frustrating in a way because other than that, there is not much room to be creative in those magazines. So I'm yeah, hoping but, but, that. But then, then we come to the we come to the big revelation that nobody yes. is actually. I have actually not a single person or an article that I've read about that they're just talking about the brands. But what happens when the trend leading uh, way? stops what happens to the magazines that are based with trends that means that the magazines are full of people who are not creative and they got to go because when there's no trends to tell them what to do then people like me and a, a lot of the ones that have been completely shown up off because we are creative yeah we're gonna come and it's like see so what are you gonna create what's the next trend oh you don't know yeah so what are you gonna do about it that's the, that's the part that's going to get really entertaining. I'm actually like, I'm going to be like popcorn over here, please. I'm going to watch this. I'm not just going to be like, so what, you gonna, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I think it's going to be really, like, really interesting. And I really look forward to it. Thanks. I really want to see. Thanks. It has to evolve. It has to change. And yeah, I'm going to be like with my popcorn quite ready. Just waiting to see what happens with yeah. those magazines. <laughs> so, um... On another note, have you have you um, happened to had like a surge from editors, stylists, or anything already like bombarding you with emails? I know like a couple of my friends in in Spain in PR, they've already received a, an avalanche of uh, requests. Really, I mean for us it's been quite steady since it. Well, not the first two weeks I would say because everything was up in the air. Like everyone got sent home. And I kind of like felt that certain publications were not ready for it. Yeah. So they kind of like used those two weeks to really adapt and be like, how can we keep going until this situation is over? So apart from those two weeks, it's been, it's been quite steady with like when it comes to requests and with a mixture of like requests for kind of like COVID-19 themes like what brands are doing or supporting emerging designers etc etc but also now bring in a bit more like trend content um but what i've noticed though is that for the past couple of weeks they've been reaching out more about how are you guys working when it comes to samples because they are yeah. now really starting to plan um shoots from june so I guess like things are gonna really get busier when June starts, which is next week. Great! Yeah. <laughs> Yay! It's, it's literally upon us. It's literally. I know. 
No, but I mean, I know. It's, it's, it's very interesting in sort of sense because a lot of people have asked me as well, just like off the books, just when it comes to like jewelry, things that are like very close to your skin, ears, stuff like that, in the terms of, you know, are you guys going to be disinfecting them? What happens to the clothes? Are they going to be this and that? Oh, really? Yeah, but I, I personally believe like, just like any other, you know, flu, viruses, any type of like bacteria, nothing really, especially if it's like a fabric, it doesn't survive there for like weeks on end, <laughs> you know? Like, yeah. Waiting, outside, waiting for the next stop, top model. To <laughs> you, hello, it's me. I've been waiting for you. Yeah, no, not going to happen. You know, like, that I do understand is like maybe there's there's ways for for jewelry to be disinfected. The only problem, obviously, if it's precious metals and all of that, so there's the oxidation. Oh, that's problem. gonna yeah. So, so there are. I don't know. Let's see. But like, I I I, I feel like that the, how the fashion industry has worked until now is like what a lot of people don't know. There's only usually one sample that goes through the ringer, and you know we're still here. You know. <laughs> yeah. No, I think. I think in that sense, it'll be fine. What I've heard, though, is that shoots will be like a teeny tiny team. Whoever yeah, goes there great. is just... Yeah, so I guess it's just going to be... And also, like, more like, come on, come on, come on. This has to go. Let's chit-chat. More work, more focus on what we're doing there, um, which is good. But other than that, I don't know how they're going to do it. I think they have to really start seeing what sort of, like, procedures to implement on their end. Because from my end, I don't know. <laughs> what am no, I going to do with the clothing? No, for, for, for me, it's going to be very simple. I, I always say, like, all the chains starts up from an individual level. I, uh, I'm, I've i made that, like, uh, decision. Even somebody would offer me now, like, do you want to come and do the shoot? I've ordered a uh, my face masks from Spain from a company that um, has, like, um, changeable filters that they... Oh, that's good. Maybe. They, they protect me, they protect the others if I have to be in a public public space uh, to whatnot or shoot. So I'm waiting for that to arrive because that was a pre-order and obviously um, the orders of those have skyrocketed. So I will be receiving that in, in about two, three weeks time. So before that arrives, I am doing nothing. I can consult you <laughs> and all of that, but you won't be, I won't be one of those people as soon as there's a carrot at the end of the stick that's like, oh, come and shoot this. I'm like, when I can say that I can do it, that I protect myself Definitely. and others, more importantly, then I'm more than happy to go and do that. But that's, that's what people have to do, to be honest. And I don't know, I think it would be reckless if someone went and like, yes, the government have said, No, but go. it's already, people are already doing that. The government says, so you're going to jump in the well. You're going to go and cluster fucking parks with... 15 of your friends i'm sorry it's it's irresponsible we've all have to be cooped up three months in a, in a house it's not an excuse i'm sorry it's not an excuse. I know. yesterday i went for the first ever walk like long walk and, yeah and i went through like by a park that was about five thousand people i saw God. zero masks and I'm talking about from young people to old people to families to small kids and whatever. And I'm like, wow. You see, that's something I don't get. Me I just, either. yeah. It's just like, it's like a goldfish memory. It's like, it's like, oh, thousands of people died. I go around my ball. Oh, what's happening? Like what they yes. say, the goldfish does not remember. Or like, I think it's just because, you know, what people think like, oh, because no one in my family has had it. It's just not real. Like it, it's like kind of like in the back of your mind. Yes, yeah. like people have died, but because it it hasn't touched um, home, you know yeah, that. Touch home. It's right. Like, that's the sort of thing. It's like it's not like that. You don't worry about getting cancer, and then ten years from now you're diagnosed with it. You know, it, it, it can happen, and these are the realities of life. So I mean, it's like if with just like little, you know, thoughtfulness, kindness. You can do a lot. You know, nobody's yes. asking you to bring the moon from the sky. But just <laughs> consider it. You know, it's it's almost like if it's about if it's a matter of about two weeks of do I go now open the bottle of beer in the park with my friends or I do it in two weeks time. Two weeks is not much to ask. I mean considering I'm we've been here for like what, two months? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, it's like, it's not the end of the world. Come on now. You know, like, our, our, my, my mom and my mom's parents, they had to go through way worse. So this is nothing. Yeah. It really is nothing compared to that. So, no, like, definitely. Because I always say, I always say, it could, it could have been so much worse. It could have been that they said, you guys got to go to work. Like, go, go to war. And I'm like, hell no. Yeah. Like, let me stay indoors. I will not move. I will not leave. I would rather stay here for like a year if I need to. Because yeah. I think there are way worse things that can happen in life. And I think we have to like, obviously, it's not ideal. I know for some people, like staying indoors with their partner might not be a great situation. Um, but all I can say is like, we got to hold on to the positive. And like, yeah. the sooner we kind of like follow the rules, the sooner <laughs> we're going to get out. And yeah, we're going to be able to go to, back into our to, lives. You also have to remember from this sort of perspective that, yeah, you can be like, like, for example, me, 35, completely healthy individual who can do things like probably not going to affect me that much directly. But I have to remember that there's a lot of people who are not as blessed and lucky. There can be younger people who have um, um, uh, illnesses doing their lungs. They have yeah. cancer, something that they cannot control, but they are in complete mercy of the other people, what, what they are choosing to do. And the more of this fuckery and this sort of things like me, me, me is going on, the more collectively everybody is going to suffer. I know. This, this is something that you have to understand that it's like we all have problems, but there are bigger problems than our little yeah. things that yes. know, the little devil here saying like, no, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't know. Maybe it's because I went through <laughs> ballet school. I can do it. Did you? <laughs> because I, let me tell you, they told, told us like you missed two times, you know, a lesson without proper reason. You're kicked out. It was like oh, army wow. and we're kids. So you learn perseverance and the sort of things like you push through pain or whatever it is. You just need to zip it. I love through. it. Because for me, it was also the same. I did not do ballet, obviously, um, but I did swimming. Yeah. And it was like really strict. And yeah, and so that's all that shapes you as well. Yeah. You like kind of like I follow the rules yeah. because <laughs> that's what I because think there was a reason. Good. To my friends who have kids, put them in ballet school, boys or girls, do not give them iPads, put them in ballet school. Then when they do that, Discipline. Then, they, then they can handle all of the other nonsense. Definitely. Um, what is going to happen with uh, ASV <laughs> in September? When is the fashion week that is cancelled? <laughs> I, I, just, I don't know. If I'm, if I'm very honest, I think like, Fashion Week, it's not what it used to be before. And for me, London Fashion Week, I always like saw London as like the creative one, the one with the emerging cool designers doing something very different. And like the years have gone by and I'm like, what's going on over here? Like what's happened? It's just not the same. No. And um, to be honest, I, oh, I know it's, it's going to sound mean, but I don't think I'm going to miss it. Because I think it has to change a lot to come back better than before. And then maybe I'll be like, yes, I love it again. No, I, I, think, I think this would be a great opportunity to bring Fashion Week to the fashion people. Not the media circus and all of the, I want to be in fashion. I have Instagram with 20,000 followers that I bought. And I'm here, but I actually work in a coffee shop, but I'm here in the front row because I'm an influencer. No, you, you shouldn't be there. I'm sorry. You know, it's like, you know, pay your dues. If, if you get there, you know, I don't care where you come from, whatever you do, but pay your goddamn dues before you, you go there. And yeah. because, because this is what's going to happen automatically if we, if there's going to be shows only the key people are going to be there and they're going to be situated two meters of each other <laughs> if you are not an editor x y and z or you don't work with x y and z that is somewhat relevant to that brand to be showcased to you you're not going to be there whether you like it or not yeah i feel like in a way it kind of like became more quantity over quality yeah and that's why kind of like 
it started to be so accessible for industry people and like as you say people who are just interested in fashion don't get me wrong it's great to see like a show um but i think there are other ways to kind of like get an experience of what fashion is i really i do agree i think like a fashion show should be more focused on the editors and yeah. the people that do actually need to know yeah, because it's a business it's a bis- it's a business uh event this is how yeah. i see it fashion shows is not a leisure or an option it's a business event if i would not have to be there for business reasons you won't see me in a single <laughs> front row or a single show because i'm not interested I'm not interested no, no, no. about about that. I just want to see the clothes. I want to see the, the people maintain my business relationship with the people involved. I don't yeah. need to be I don't need to be fighting with some Mary with an ASOS outfit about who sits where because I have a name and I've been in, and mm. I've been invited and I've I've been told best I use it there. Done. Thanks. I don't care if it's front row, third row, fifth row. If my seat is there, that's where I'm <laughs> sitting. Done. you know there's nothing else to that yeah no i i i support you i agree i agree i sh- i i should have a flag be like yes no no but <laughs> see, that's, that's how i did it like how i started yeah. going to the shows first you get a ticket you respect that you respect the pr who invited you you do you pay your dues you stand then slowly you know as you uh develop your skills and your career goes forward you become you know more relevant to this designer and that designer and that's how it forms it's like a long process definitely you can't expect just to be just like planted in the heart of it it doesn't it is not happened like that for anyone and i do feel like i don't know about you but i do feel that when it comes to like fashion shows a lot of people forget their manners and yeah. they forget that at the end of the day we are people yeah fair enough i'm i'm the pr but that doesn't mean you get to treat me like like crap like i mean I'm, like, i'm if saying... somebody spits in your face do you think you're going to give the sample to them when they want it exactly and it's just <laughs> like it's just like come on like i don't like holding a grudge on people but if i have to i'll bloody yeah. do let me tell you that because i don't take this respect i think that at the end of the day we're all humans we all deserve the same respect we give and we get Always. and so for me it's like If you're going to be rude if you're going to just talk to me like that because you didn't get I don't know a front row I'd be like I mean listen I've done everything I can just yeah. bear with me and the, the whole point is not about being on the front row being on, if if the importance of being in the front row that's about ego Yeah the point that's is, if you get a ticket to be on the show to see the clothes that's when you're there for the right reason it doesn't matter it's about to see the clothes I see the clothes I fuck off Bye. Yeah. <laughs> yes. If there's vodka, free vodka bar, I might stay. But otherwise, <laughs> otherwise, no. No, I do. I do agree. Like you can definitely tell who goes there because they really love the designer. They're like to see new collections and who's just there for the wrong reasons. And it's really sad because if I really I wish I could know everyone's reasons when it comes to attending a fashion show because then I would definitely change my <laughs> my hours of yeah. list and I would definitely advise my clients differently because I would say she's not there because she really likes you or because she's going to be interested in what you do and your job and your work and everything I think we should bring someone who really who really cares and who's a fan of what you do and who will definitely get in touch to use your exactly. clothing because the, the what 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 has kind of like been completely for, forgotten about that for the designer to even have a presentation we're not even talking about a show it's not free it costs a lot a lot of money don't you tell know? me that so, yeah so for you to have some freeloader there supposedly supporting you when they only give to like they would literally take the last many is leech out of your spine if they could yeah. so why why you why you, you don't want to have those type of people there because they're not going to do you any favors in the long run. It might look Definitely. more like always oh, busy, but what is the actual like correspondence and that's what has been a ma- major um topic among even influencers like how much how much do uh their posts actually correlate directly to sales. And it's not a lot. It's not a lot. Really? I mean I don't know. I mean <laughs> 
I don't want to talk bad about like anyone. I think I think what they are doing, I don't know. Most of them they have like built their business based yeah. on like what they do, like posting pictures of what they wear, where they like the events they attend. But I I don't know. Maybe maybe in a way I'm still a bit old school, and I still feel that there are certain events that should be maybe more focused towards the press, like and yeah. stylist. Or if, um, or if you're an influencer, because I do know influencers who are very professional. They do yes. it for the right reasons. They they give their audience the fashion advice, uh, options how to dress, how to do, rather than me, me, me here with mojito, me here, me here. Look with all of all of the shoes I bought with the money <laughs> that you gave me. That's not an influencer to me. For me, you have to give something to your public. Yeah, for me, the same. There has to be some like good quality content coming yeah. from that influencer. Perfect. And I feel like sometimes, at least from my perspective, it's so hard to have to be like going through like influencer after influencer because whenever we have to put together like an outreach kind of like um, initiative for clients, it's just like, oh my God, just you really have to go through everyone to make sure you really suggest the right ones, the ones yeah. that you think will bring good quality content and value into their business. Yeah, it's just the oversaturation of everything now because yeah. because everybody sees an opportunity, but they forget that it's a lot of work. And then yeah. then there's in all fields, if, even we're talking about business field, there's always someone who who takes the opportunity for the for the wrong reasons, and then the people more deserving and more suitable they miss out because they only focus yeah. on the craft. I I mean, it's like it's like you can't say. This or that is not so black and white. Let's just, but let's just put it that in, is that true. the situation now <laughs> will divide a lot of the things out of <laughs> which I'm very sorry to say, very looking forward to. <laughs> well, we are now um, actually, actually uh, coming. We have about 15 minutes if we're lucky. Oh my! You were so right today. I yeah. Like, oh my god! An hour. I'm gonna. I just. I don't know how that's gonna go. Oh. So, my, okay. So, good. So, so I'm going to ask before we go to the notorious um, fire quick fire round of silly questions. Um, I, I want to ask you rather than what are you gonna do first when this lockdown is lifted because now we're towards the end of the lockdown anyway. <laughs> what would be your uh, one advice for any any independent represented brand, any brand for towards the future that might feel that they're struggling at the moment, what would be your advice for them to be very proactive about? My advice would be to really look at what they've been doing so far. Cut down any unnecessary cost and think of like any innovative ways to do what they are doing at a lower cost without risking the quality and what makes them unique. I think it's really important. It's like a time of like reflection to really look at what you've been doing so far. What can you be doing different that's going to set you apart from the rest? What can you do different now? What can you start implementing now? So when this is all over, you still stay afloat and you can actually carry like can just go on running your business. Because my like, because I know it's really hard, and like I've heard of so many brands sadly closing down, and I know it's really really hard. But there's always a light at the end of the tunnel, and for me, okay. it's like take like don't like it's hard, it's really frustrating, and but hold on to the positive. Remember why you started your business. Remember why you love it, and focus on like just being a better version of yourself and your of your business and do things differently and you, I promise it will definitely make a big difference because this is like a short-term thing hopefully no second wave coming please but if you do this if you do get through this you will actually have learned so much and like there's nothing better than learning like for me nothing better than like a learning experience okay, 100% and and just the fact that you know do not take things for granted you know yeah. We, we are the lucky ones that we're still alive. We're the lucky ones who are not on a ventilator, like, like fighting for our lives. Very true. You know, like for in, if you scale up any sort of 
little thing, like when it comes to money and all of that, like it's always going to be present. We're all, always going to be struggling. But you know, money things are things that you can always find a way. But when it comes to your health, that's not in your hands anymore. Definitely. So, so be, you know, I always try to say it's like, you know, when I start going over my head, it's like, that's okay, really back in. Let's be real here, you know. Is your life going to come to an end if you have to work in a, a supermarket uh, factory shelf, putting shelves up for like a couple of months? No. If that, if it comes to that, you've done a lot worse. And trust me, yeah. <laughs> a lot worse <laughs> <laughs> in my time to get where I am now. So, you know, it's, it's, it really isn't. And if somebody wants to judge you based on that, you know, fuck them. Well, yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. No. Um, like for me, like I had to, when I started first freelancing, I had to ha get a part-time job because yeah. I couldn't pay bills. Like, hello, this is London. Yeah, <laughs> I wish I wish I had the money. I make the money to really like have a place for myself and all that. And for me, it's just like, I've always really appreciated and like, I really like admire like the people that say, oh, I have like another job so I can fund my own business. And I'm like, well done you. Like, seriously, like, I only wish you the best because people that show that kind of like work ethic, those are the ones that for me, they deserve the, like the best. They do deserve to take off their business to the next level and then become the next big brand that everybody wants. Yeah, because there has to be the sort of, um, you know, nothing comes without a sacrifice. Exactly. Like, you know, it can be, it's like whether it's, whether it's been the sort of things like for me, it's been throughout the years, like when I started like branching out to on my own there was months that there was no money coming in and whatever i had saved or whether it was my my parents who helped me or whatever but those that was the sacrifice i had to do when i was looking at my friends doing all of this stuff i could not do anything i'm still the person i own one hoodie from year 2015 <laughs> that i still wear every week one <laughs> i still <laughs> I just said to my boyfriend today, it's like, I need to buy a new one. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> you know, because it's it's always in the back of the head. It's like, you know, if you buy something, it has to be something that you need. Not yeah. because you can. But anyways. <laughs> so everybody who's struggling there, keep the, the flag high. There's always a way out. Yes. Um, time for the quick fire uh, round. Ooh! Going to be cut out. I'm waiting for the timer to come like ding two minutes. <laughs> um, so how this works, it's gonna be silly questions, one or the other. You can answer as freely as you want. This is nothing like um serious. Okay. So okay. let's go. Cautious or spontaneous? Spontaneous. Uh show or presentation? Presentation. Crystals or pearls? Oh, uh, pearls. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, uh, like I would say, like crystals and pearls in, in the same thing. <laughs> uh, Malaga or Barcelona? Hello, do you even have to ask that? Barcelona, always. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Paris or Milan? Ooh, Paris. Um, ice cream or sorbet? Oh, hello, ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> for me, it would be sorbet because I'm allergic to milk. Um, oh, oh, I feel sorry for you. But no. buy, whenever you buy ice cream, give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 sorry. Um, red or blue? Blue. Shiny or matte? Matte. Enough or just a little bit more? A little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> Pizza or pasta? Oh, oh, both. You can't choose. You gotta keep both. <laughs> Trousers or a skirt? Oh, a skirt. Heels or flats? Flats. Trainers, if you make me <laughs> be more specific. <laughs> uh, simple or complicated? Simple. Patient or impatient? Oh, oh. Ooh, a bit impatient, impatient. <laughs> Looks or charisma? Charisma, all the way. 
And that concludes <laughs> the episode 18 of Morse Goes by Vesa. Uh, uh, before before uh, we uh, sign off, if you just join us, do not worry. Regardless of Instagram's new uh, uh, ways of not like saving all of these <laughs> shows and so what, it doesn't matter. Everything is coming back to you on IGTV in, in a couple of weeks' time, YouTube in a couple of days' time. So if you missed our conversations with Aga, do not fret. We're, mm -hmm. we, we have been saved for eternity in the world of mystery. <laughs> um, if, uh, but further said, is there any last words of uh, that you want to say to everybody encouragement where can we follow your progress uh, where can we uh, observe what is to come that you already did a little teaser about uh, the floor is yours um, so yeah if you jump on Instagram it's ASV comms that's where you're gonna know what it is that I do want to talk about but I was very tempted to say, I almost no. said it. And I was like, <laughs> oh, no. I was like, Don't do you see? Are you still there? <laughs> oh, my God. I think I froze. Did I freeze? <laughs> but that's good. <sighs> yeah, it was quite funny. But yes. Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I bet that's going to be embarrassing, right? Oh, it always happens to me. No. Um, But Nothing my final... No, that is true. That is true. That's fine. My final advice to everyone would be to just not give up. It's easier to quit than to carry on. And yeah. I always say through adversity, you can only come out stronger. And, yeah. and if you have to cry, you cry. I cry. I, like, I've cried so much during this like self-isolating situation. But always remember, those are always a light at the end of the tunnel and that's all I keep thinking all I wake up is like you can do this we can get through this and you have to really focus on the positive little things even yeah, if you're we're, we're, already, we're already at the, at the brighter yeah. side we're opening up a couple of weeks ago we were still like here in in London it was like 1300 people dead on a daily yeah. basis, oh God. you know, and just like the mental process that you have to go through just to uh, all of a sudden be afraid of everything that you were so used to. So yeah. we've, we've already done that. We've already come through out of it where we have more knowledge, we have more information, we are more equipped and we are more leveled up. Yeah. A sort of in internal e evolution has taken place, I hope. <laughs> yes, <laughs> no, my God, please, yes. <laughs> So um, I'm definitely looking forward to see you in person soon, as soon as they yeah. allow. Uh, and uh, coming to visit all of the beautiful the designers' work. Oh my I'm God, yes. Had, I'd be honored <laughs> to play with. Anytime, uh, I, I, you I know. You, I wish you a great evening. And, thank uh, you. Okay. And thanks, uh, thanks for coming. Oh my God! Thank you so much for having me. It's been an absolute honor. <laughs> the, the honor is all mine, and the pleasure as well. And on this note, the Instagram has informed me that I have one minute and thirty seconds to wrap Ooh. it up. So well done. Well, Yay! great show. Love you loads. Uh, be safe and Bye. see you guys soon. Ciao. Thank you so much.